Welcome back, my friends. Today on VetumCrit, we're talking about treatment of hyperkalemia and the use of dextrose and insulin specifically. As you might know, hyperkalemia or elevated plasma potassium level can be treated with a wide variety of methods in an emergency veterinary setting. These methods may include intravenous isotonic crystalloid fluid therapy, insulin with dextrose, sodium bicarbonate, adrenergic receptor agonists such as albuterol or terbutaline, and ultimately treatment of the underlying condition, for example, relief of the urethral obstruction. The main mechanism of action of these therapies are the following. IV fluids will increase glomerular filtration rate, leading to enhanced potassium elimination and dilutional effect. Exogenous insulin will stimulate the sodium potassium ATPase pumps on cell surfaces, resulting in net movement of extracellular potassium into the cells. By giving dextrose alone, you will stimulate the release of endogenous insulin from the beta islet cells of the pancreas, leading to the same upregulation of the sodium potassium ATPase pumps. Sodium bicarbonate, in turn, will increase the activity of hydrogen potassium exchangers on cell surfaces and will increase the activity of sodium hydrogen exchangers, which will drive sodium potassium ATPase pump to move potassium into the cell in exchange of sodium. Finally, sympathomimetics, such as terbutaline, will lower potassium by stimulation of the sodium potassium ATPase pumps, resulting in an intracellular shift of potassium. In a recent study published by Jones et al., authors evaluated different potassium lowering treatment strategies used by clinicians managing male cats with urethral obstruction presenting to the UC Davis University Teaching Hospital. One of their objectives was to determine how much dextrose was required per unit of insulin to prevent hypoglycemia in this population of cats. In this retrospective study, they identified 50 male cats who presented with a blood potassium of greater or equal to 7 milliequivalents per liter due to urethral obstruction. The four most common medical treatment strategies for the reduction of hyperkalemia in the study were the following. First, a combination of IV fluids, dextrose, and insulin in 21 cats, or 42% of the population. Second was a combination of IV fluids, dextrose, insulin, and sodium bicarbonate in 28% of cats. Third, it was IV fluids alone in 8% of cats. And finally, a combination of dextrose, insulin, sodium bicarbonate in another 8%. In 40 cats treated with insulin and dextrose, the median insulin dose administered in the first hour was 0.17 units per kg, ranging from 0.07 to 0.5 units per kilogram. The median dextrose dose administered in the first hour was 0.45 gram per kilogram, ranging from 0.1 to 1 gram per kilogram. Of the nine cats with known dextrose insulin dose, three became hypoglycemic. Two of these cats had received 2.1 and 2.5 grams of dextrose for each unit of insulin. There was no association between the early initiation of dextrose-containing fluids and avoidance of low blood glucose. This observation suggests that the previously recommended ratio of 2 grams of dextrose for every one unit of insulin administered may not be sufficient to avoid low blood glucose in all cats. Given the variability of recommendations for dextrose dosing and the fact that this study's feline population contained animals that develop hypoglycemia despite receiving greater than 2 grams of dextrose per unit insulin, it is reasonable to recommend a greater dextrose insulin ratio when treating hyperkalemia. For example, in my personal practice, I prefer to administer 0.1 unit per kilogram of regular insulin in combination with 1 mL per kg of 50% dextrose followed by 5% dextrose continuous rate infusion. And I would use the following protocol for a standard 5 kilo feline patient. A total of 0.5 unit of insulin per cat intramuscular or intravenously depending on the patient's stability. 
a total of 5 ml of 50% dextrose IV, which is 2.5 grams of dextrose, diluted 1 to 4, 1 to 6 to decrease asthma laude after solution and prevent thrombophlebitis. By giving this amounts of dextrose and insulin, the dextrose-insulin ratio will end up being around 5 grams per unit. And then I would start 5% dextrose added to the bag of fluids that the cat is currently receiving. I would recheck blood glucose every 30 to 60 minutes for the first 1 to 2 hours and then every 2 hours for the next 6 to 8 hours or sooner if the cat becomes symptomatic for low blood glucose. All right. So what are the main takeaways here? First, a dextrose insulin ratio of 2 grams per unit appears to be inadequate in preventing hypoglycemia in some cats, regardless of whether a dextrose-containing CRI is administered. Second, high dextrose insulin ratios and frequent blood glucose monitoring should be considered when treating hyperkalemia with this therapeutic method. If you want to learn more about potassium homeostasis, download the free two chapters of the electrolyte and acid-based management workbook by clicking the link below located in the description. And I'll see you next time, my friends.